Right, so we're going to go over a chain of um, how to first set up a uh, saddle from a nickel pass when they're defending. Um, and then we're going to show a counter to that, so how to stop that when someone attempts it. And then along that chain is how you go from a, into a false reap position into the saddle in the end. So there's a lot of backwards and forwards, but you need to know each step in order to drill it. Okay, so Johnny, you back for me? Okay, so quite often we go into a knee cut position and I manage to get all the way down to this point and he catches the bottom part of my leg with his leg. So just go behind, to there. And I'm in this position here. Especially if they've got their forearm underneath and I can't get my knee to the mat, it's really hard for me to get my foot here because I can't get this underhook. Especially if it's tucking it in tight, it's really hard for me to now progress to this way without me having my back taken. If I start still keep trying to push through and start driving through, then he's going to come up and start looking to take my back, etc. Okay, so my foot's trapped, he's pinned it together with his thighs, and I'm in this position. And in order to, for me to stop him from moving, I quite often will sit or try and sit on my own heel, which clamps his leg in place. Gives me a bit of breathing space and a bit of time to think what I want to do next. Okay, so we just turn around this way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back step into which becomes a, a saddle position. You can do this quickly, you can do it slowly. It's preference on how you do it. Um, when I first started this, I went slowly, but that means they have time to react. Uh, it gives you a bit more control initially, but it's harder to get into the final position. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to base my hands down and I want to have my knee connect to my foot behind me. So the, the front of my knee connects to my heel. So I base down, I can even put one hand on him, base down, connect my knee to my heel, and then I'm gonna walk backwards so that my knee comes up, and my heel and my knee stay connected. The moment I start rocking back and his hips start to follow me, and you can see his knees start to follow me, I grab hold of both his shin and his knee, fall backwards, lift him up, and then get into that saddle position. And I keep both legs here. I want it so that he can't just suddenly retract this leg out and then start looking to escape the leg lock position. Okay, so we'll go over that again. So I've gone for a knee cut. He's holding on tight from this position. And then I'm going to base off him, bring my knee to my heel, base off the mat, or base off the mat and bring my knee to my heel, should I say. Start rocking backwards until he starts following me and then I reach down to his far leg. So I'm, I'm controlling this leg, and this is the one I'd eventually be attacking, but his defense is to get this one free and run away. So I stop that. Rock backwards. Slight pinch of the legs, making sure that my both my legs are controlling above his knee line. And then we've got both his legs trapped, and then for those who know that you've got the submissions there, or the heel hook, etc. Okay, and then I will do it with a little bit of speed. In, up to this position. Okay, any questions? No? Have a good look. Thanks, Okay, so, so I'm going to show you the opposite side of this now and how when people go for this, they don't do it that slow. They will back step quite quickly because they want to get that position. And it's quite simple how I defend this. It's I just Whichever leg was on top, I just extend out and catch a butterfly hook on the back of his hamstring or his calf, depending on which part you catch. So Chris gets into that knee cut position. I've got him caught from here. So go back to that. What is important is you don't necessarily go for this if they're giving you something. For instance, if I'm here like this and he gets an underhook, then he may as well knee cut. Okay, so I stay nice and close. Right, so as Chris now back steps, I catch with my left foot, just here look. And then we keep going, and I let him go all the way to there, okay? From my position now, I make sure that this butterfly hook gets rid of, so I come under, and then from there, hit the skate and come up, okay? So we'll do that again, we'll do it a bit slower so we see the catch of the heel hook, uh, the catch of the butterfly hook, sorry. So I'm nice and close in this position. As he starts to back step, in fact, we'll just turn slightly, turn around. As he starts to back step, just hold on, this left foot is going to stick up and catch it and then I'm going to use the momentum of him back stepping to take him over onto his hip. Okay, so as he does it, catch, keep going 
and then I get rid of this one, walk your steps, go to escape, then drive up into it. Okay? On the next part of this technique, you're going to see what happens if they become stubborn with this inside hook on the leg. But for the time being, don't worry about it. Think about it from my side initially. So again, one more time. So as he goes to back step, catch, let him go all the way over. Walk his hip, get rid of this hook, hip escape, and then drive that up and over, and then make sure my hips get close to his hips. Okay? Thank you. In this position, he's nice and tight. I go to back step, he catches, and we go all the way through. What I'm gonna do is I catch this leg here. So let's just turn around and slide up there. I'm gonna keep this right leg extended, catch, and then reach my right arm. Oh, sorry, buddy. Without crushing his balls, reach my right arm through and catch it just here like this. Okay, so if he tries now to retract his left leg, it's hard for him to do. I'm then going to, from there, extend my leg out, bring my left leg back under, and get the triangle and reach for the other leg. It's kind of like a false reap for those who know it, but it's on the ground. False reap normally is from a reverse de la Hiva, if anyone knows what that position is. Um, but the idea is that I catch a leg in between mine, bring my leg underneath and then scoop back under. Okay, so we'll do it again. Okay, I'm in this position here, I base, go to back step, he catches. I catch the leg and then bring my right arm through. So I'm catching this just to keep it away from my groin to bring my right arm through and get a nice grip. From here, to stop him from being able to elevate this, so my left forearm's for, if I just keep that there and try and lift it, it follows. If I get a nice grip here, you can feel the kind of grip. I can then bring my bottom leg free, go under, triangle, chase his leg. And then once, once I've got control of this with my two legs, I don't worry about this one. As long as they're pincing my, I'm pincing my thighs together, my knees together, I then chase this one. Because once I've got hold of this and secured the position, I then focus on attacking this inside leg. Okay? You got to put your head that way for me. More back step, he catches. I catch this leg, sneak feed through, get his gable grip. From here, this stops him from being able to retract the knee. So he tries to pull his knee out, it's hard. And I'm, I'm, I'm being intentional with this leg towards his groin. I'm like flaring my knee out so there's still pressure there. And then from this now, I take this one away. And again, if I don't put pressure up with this, and I'm just gentle with it, and I try and lift this up, it'll follow. And I can't get rid of it. But the moment I get this gable grip and apply a bit of pressure, you can't follow it. Through, cross my feet, drag through and getting into that what's called double trouble position. Okay? Do you need to see this? Yeah. Okay. Someone else needs to pull.